As some of you know, I think this is, I think we forgot to announce this, but end of this month, uh, I think the last Sunday of, probably the 28th, I'm not sure which, or maybe next week's last Sunday. Yeah, so we have the international service. Is it this one or next one? Uh, not this one. It's not this one. Okay, it's next one. Okay. So, um, hey, man. Uh, so we have an international service that we are planning. Uh, and what we, we, we used to do this in Auckland as well. It's like an uh, international service, but the focus is to uh, invite a lot of our friends and colleagues and our neighbors to come to, come to church and great opportunity to reach out to our friends. So, um, so in light of that, you know, uh, Tyson asked me to um, uh, share something or talk about the great commission that God has given us. Uh, it's about, uh, you know, go and make disciples of all nations. So we're going to learn from Matthew uh, chapter 28 today and uh, learn something from it and what we can do. Amen. So before we go ahead, let's uh, bow down and pray. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you so much, uh, God, for this evening. Thank you uh, for the good news that we could hear. Uh, God, uh, truly you are a sovereign God. You are in control, Father. Um, even though um, there were so many people who were away then on Sunday, that, but we sh you still took care of them. You had a great service. And God, you led us through the Holy Spirit, and everyone shifted to do their job. And it was a great time, God. We're grateful that um, Smiths and Jono and Christine are back with us. And Georgia and uh, um, her sister is with us. Thank you, Lord, that uh, this uh, this evening we are together to learn from your word. Be with us, lead through your spirit, Father God, and lead us uh, so that we can understand the purpose and the goal that you have set for us, Father God. Mm -hmm. Help us to live that goal and uh, <coughs> that mission in our life. Thank, Thank you for everything we just did. Amen. 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 So, um, this is my first time to actually use one computer with, with the presentation and notes. So, forgive me if I'm slow or if I look at the screen too much. So, this is the learning curve for me. So, um, um, so today we're going to look at, uh, you know, um, Matthew chapter 21, as I said earlier, and uh, we're going to read from uh, Matthew 38. Uh, 18 to 20. Um, now, it, just those three scriptures are, um, it's a passage, they are also called as the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, now, for, for those who are being part of uh, ICOC, uh, if you are part of the ICOC for more than 15 years, you know, uh, our movement has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, before 2000 years, you know, um, I, I, I'm part of the church since 1997. I was 10. My parents became a disciple in 1997. I got baptized in 1999 when I was 30. Uh, but I've seen the old movement and what we are now. And um, uh, I remember being part of the church. Our goal was to go out and evangelize and go to every nation. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and everyone knew their goal was very clear. You know, any city that's more than a million people, we need to go there. Mm -hmm. And we need to have a church there. And it was amazing that before even 2000, before even we reached 2000, uh, you know, like we entered the 21st century, we uh, we achieved that goal. But mm -hmm. um, but along with that, we also made a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And our church went through a um, lot of changes. And, and through that, you know, uh, through that mistakes and by God's grace, we have learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And right now, uh, and now even today, we are. Uh, so now our focus is our relationship with God. Our focus is our relationship with one another, and our focus is about, um, you know, um, you know, making, um, you know, making sure that you know we are tuned with God mm -hmm. and His and His and His scriptures. But it doesn't mean that our mission, you know, has changed. Mm -hmm. We still have the goal, you know, we still want, uh, want to follow this. So, um, so, because we know it is the reason why Jesus came on this earth. Mm -hmm. He came on this earth not to just 
save you and me, but also to save every nation. Amen. I think it's very hot. I'm feeling very hot. Sorry. Is it this, this or what? Okay. <laughs> not. I'll just reuse the fan screen, guys. Sorry. So, amen. Um, so, so, you know, um, Matthew 28, the verse 18 to 20, we'll, go, we'll turn our Bible there. And we see that this is a, um, you know, great commission, as I said earlier. Yeah. It's the Jesus' last word before he was taken to the heaven. Now, uh, if you have an I don't know if I wish to say an opportunity, but if you, let's say, if you are dying or if you're going away, and if you have a chance to say your last word to someone you love, you know, you will make sure those your, those your last words, you know, are really important or something that really counts. So, um, you know, and this was Jesus' last word before he was taken to heaven. Um, and today we'll learn what it means, what is the meaning of Great Commission, why it is important as a disciple. Amen. Um, so, um, Let's read Matthew chapter 28. Oh. Can I take someone my phone with that? Can someone read for me? Marie, yeah. can you read for me, please? 28? Two? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, oh, I have it on my side. Okay. Then Jesus, okay. Uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you, always to the very end of age. Amen. So, you know, this is, um, I'm pretty sure many of you know the scriptures by heart. Like, you know, we know what it means, we know, like, we have read it, or like, you know, we know, uh, like, inside out. Um, see what happens was when uh, after the fall of uh, uh, Adam and Eve you know the only way God could restore the relationship between between us and him was sending his son Jesus Christ for, his, for us and uh, because you know he created us to have a relationship with us and that relationship was tainted because of our sin and Jesus, you know, came and he sacrificed and he was sacrificed on the cross so that we get a gift of salvation and we also, uh, you know, so that, so that we can win that, uh, we can have that same relationship with God that Jesus, that God intended when he created us first. Um, and, and Great Commission is basically, uh, is that, is that, that Jesus wanted his disciples to continue his mission. So if you see the word commission, if you, uh, I saw the dictionary meaning of this word, uh, the commission means an instruction, command, or a role given to a person or a group. It also means a group of people entrusted by official body with, with authority to do something. So as a disciple, you know, we we have given and an authority. That's what Jesus said. Like He said, all the authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. And see, it's a commandment that has action in it. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? It's not like, um, you know, yeah, I became a disciple and that's where, that's where it stops. No, I don't have to worry about anything or think about anyone else. It's not like that. So, you know, Jesus told us to do three things here in this commandment. If we break it down, this great uh, commission, it says, go and make disciples of all nations. Means we, have, we must go and talk to people. You know, uh, baptize the, them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, uh, and the last one, teach them to obey. Now, these things, uh, and, then, and then he assures us that in, until the end, he will be with us. 
So, Great Commission is a call of Christ for his disciples to extend his authority over the whole world. Mm -hmm. You know, we are we are to share the gospel with everyone so that more and more people see who Jesus is and understand the plan that he has for all of us. You know, uh, disciples who are disciples are people who are who have committed their heart and their mind to follow the thinking and conduct of our Jesus, such as discipling, because that's a lifetime experience. Because being a disciple and helping someone to be a disciple, it's a lifelong lesson. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you go and baptize someone and that's it, your role is done. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, being a disciple is actually your journey starts from the day you get baptized. It's, it's like, you know, you teach them. Like being, I'm, I'm being a disciple for 20 years and even now, I, there's so much I feel that I have to learn. There's so many things that I feel that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And as a Christian, we have, Jesus has given that responsibility to us. And that is what the Great Commission is. It's not just like, okay, I'm a disciple and I don't have, my, I am saved so I don't have to worry about anyone else. Mm -hmm. That's not what the Great Commission is. It is it is the extension of what Jesus has given us. It is the extension of compassion and love that he showed to the humanity. So as a disciple, we have that role. Amen? So um, uh, if we uh, look at the heart of Jesus, you know, in Luke chapter 19, uh, verse 10, uh, it says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Uh, now it's very interesting uh, because I feel that okay um, I need the scripture but then I did a little bit of research and I, I felt like okay, what is what is the meaning of seek here you know this word seek and if you if you um, study in, in detail is the word the word seek comes from a Hebrew word called uh, ZTO uh, or ZTO uh, it's it means it's basically it describes uh, an action where someone is seeking God mm -hmm. with all his heart mm -hmm. in order to worship him. Mm -hmm. So what it means is, like, you know, um, so when it says that Son of Man came to seek and save the lost, many times I used to only focus on, okay, I have to save the lost. But I, or I used to somehow or forget about seeking. And what, 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 what amazes me is that, you know, see, Jesus was, Jesus sought after us. He sought after me. Mm -hmm. He sought, sought after my soul. Mm -hmm. That's why he, he gave up his throne, his luxurious probably life in, uh, in heaven. You know, he came down to earth in the form of <clears throat> man, lived a simple life, mm -hmm. lived a pure life, and, and died painfully on the cross. You know, all that displays like how much he sought uh, like the humanity, how much mm -hmm. he sought after me. It, it inspires me, how can someone go through so much of pain, someone who's willing to give up everything and willing to go through the pain and struggle just so that I, I can be saved, just so that I, he can restore the relationship that he intended at the beginning of the creation. You know, it's amazing. It, 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 it inspires me. You know, if you go further and in Luke chapter 15, if you study, um, you know, the heart of Jesus is clearly, you can study it in these three parables. You all know these parables. The mm -hmm. parable of lost sheep, um, the parable of, parable of lost coin, and the parable of lost son. Uh, the parable of lost son is also famously known as the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. right? You know? Um, we are not going to read the whole chapter, Luke chapter 15, but verse 20 and 24, uh, I would like to read it for you. And, uh, you know, we'll focus on the highlighted text that I've put here. In verse 20, uh, you know, now this is after the prodigal son's returns. You know, uh, uh, he, first what he does, he, he goes to his father and he says that, you know, uh, I want all the money. And uh, um, I don't know if you know this, but... See, you are, and correct me if I'm wrong in this, 
you are only entitled to get an inheritance when your father dies. Is that it? Yeah. Is that it? But this son, he asked his father for his inheritance even before, even though he's like alive. So he's like, I don't care whether you live or die. I want my inheritance, which is which he's not even entitled. But he takes that money and goes away. So he's hurted his relationship with father. But he comes back, and uh, he's totally broken. And he, when he's coming back, he says that oh, um, when he comes to his consciousness, he says like oh. Um, the servant in my father's house have a much better life than me. So let me go back. And he says that I, I'll beg my father and say that, you know, I don't deserve to be a son. Uh, at least let me be a servant in your house. And that way my life will be better than right now. Mm -hmm. But when he goes there, you know, his father's response is completely different. Mm -hmm. In verse 20, it says, so he got up and went to his father. But while he was still long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arm around him and kissed him. And in verse 22 and 24, uh, but the father said to his servant, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandal on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Mm -hmm. You know, this actually scripture basically tells you the heart of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, when he looked at me, that's what he saw. When when he saw me, he his heart was filled with compassion. When he saw you, his heart was filled with compassion. Because he knew that we are lost and we need saving. And as a disciple, it's something similar that we need to learn to imitate. I need to learn to imitate. Mm -hmm. Because for me, it's quite easy to um, see the world the way the world sees it. Means we look at people and say, oh, they have a nice house or a good car or great career in their life. And all these things are good to have. I'm, I, there's nothing against it. But if we don't see them the way God see them, then we are failing. We are not seeing or not participating in that great commission. Mm -hmm. Because the way when Jesus looks at people, those who are not saved, you know, he has compassion for them. He say, He knows that they are lost and they need saved. So my question is, you know how is um, you know how is how is your heart today? When you look at your friends, when you look at your colleagues or your family members who still don't know about God, mm -hmm. you know, do you have that compassion that this father had on his son? You know, do you have the same heart that Jesus has for the lost ones? You know, because just being a disciple is not enough. We are called. To participate you know we are called because Jesus said he has given us that authority and we as a disciple we extend that that not just authority but that compassion and kindness mm -hmm. to those who are lost amen so um, if you know you know um, I'm a big uh, Marvel fan you know, I love Marvel movies um, and I also like uh, DC especially Batman if you know, I have two or three, three Batman t-shirts, and uh, my son just got a Avenger t-shirt. My sister, she is from India. She, she will when she sends some things, you know, she will always send something very nice. So, um, but if you know, um, you know why I'm talking about Marvel. It's like you know, all these are superheroes, and if you see their movies, what I've read about them is, uh, if you combine the. Uh, the profit of all these movies is it's into more than ten billion dollars, US dollars. A lot of money. People love this and watch this, and they get they are fascinated by this superhero story. And if you see them, every character in this, whether it is Iron Man, uh, Thor, or Captain America, or Superman, Wakanda, <laughs> the uh, Wakanda. What's the name? Uh, Black Panther. Black Panther, yes. All of them, you know, they have 
a role to play. They say that, oh, I am here to save the humanity. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and and they and they uh, and and they take in in the movies they take their role very seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, they are even willing to sacrifice uh, or give up something they really love. Mm -hmm. You know, but these are just fan fantasies. You know, um, you know. Uh, but I like this one. You know, this is uh, this is very interesting. You know, I don't know if you have seen this meme, but <laughs> 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 you know, uh, you know, there's Jesus and there are these superheroes, and you know, he's talking to them mm -hmm. about, and that's how I save the world. You know, the story of Jesus and the Great Commission is something that everyone needs to hear. You know, it's not only the story that uh, matters, uh, but it also saves lives. You know, and saves those people who are lost. You know, um, so let's look at, um, uh, let, uh, as a disciple, what role we play in this great commission. Amen? Come so um, so before we go ahead, and this is something um, 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 I was talking to Tyson, he said, like, I think it's something good to think about when we are thinking about um, Great Commission. And uh, I felt like I'll include this and ask this question to all of you. Um, so um, it's amazing that we are such a small group, mm -hmm. but we are very diverse at the same time. I'm yes. Indian, uh, there are Americans, there's Islanders, uh, oh, Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'll take it. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Then uh, there are Kiwis and there are Fiji Indians and um, uh, Filipino. 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 Yes. Filipino. Yes. yes. So we all have a different background, and um, my question is this: like, what what is your culture that you feel you think um, reflects or imitate the character of Christ? Mm -hmm or uh, the character of God. Like for example, I'll give you, Indians are very known for their hospitality. Like if you go to Indian, any Indian people's house, uh, yeah, if you have friends or visiting them after some times, they will, they will never leave you unless until you at least have a tea, a cup of tea. Yeah. And they make the cup of tea, like they put five, six sugars like, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, you know, you'll definitely get a diabetes when you come back. <laughs> but, um, but they do it with a good heart. They, have, they, they want you to, because um, there is a term, uh, is since Sanskrit uh, word, like a um, sentence that, uh, that India, India has, it's called Atiti Devo It means uh, the guests are like gods, or you treat them as God. Like, you know, you have so much respect for them. But that's something, when I, when I see my culture, I see that hospitality is one of the character of God. Like Abraham was hospitable to, to the people who were coming and he was blessed because of that. Mm. So in a similar way, I want you to kind of take, uh, take a minute or like a, a time and think about, okay, what's your culture and what, what, what's that one culture reflects? Or talks, or like you know, about the character of God. You know, uh, I I just want you guys to kind of take a minute and share. Please share.
you're eating and someone passes by, you always offer your food, whether you know them or not. Yeah. So even in the workplace or in the office, if you're having a sandwich, I used to actually cry for you. <laughs> 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 because no, if you're having a sandwich, if someone walks in, you, it's, you have to offer it. Yeah. You have to have some food. And so I remember once we were on the beach having a picnic and some boys walked past, we didn't know them. Um, and after they said, I have some food, we're having lunch and some food. And they sat down and joined us. But oh. it's, you know, that's just the Fijian culture. Mm -hmm. Whether you know people or not, you always offer your food if you're eating. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it is, I mean, I can relate. Fijian culture is somewhat like Indian culture. Right? Mm -hmm. I've seen that in, uh, you know, people in the past doing that in India. So, yeah. I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone else? And growing up, uh, in, even in this country, People tended to be uh, quite compassionate when there was a need, uh, yes. when somebody needed assistance. Uh, we would say it's the same today. We have encountered a bit more of it here in Christchurch than we did in Auckland. But uh, I think <coughs> today there are many different points in which you can see the culture of this country uh, in sad decline. Mm -hmm. uh, has not always been that way. Uh, and hospitality is another one that when Joan and I were growing up, it was quite common, or at least more common than yeah. it is now. Yeah. That's probably something you find pretty much anywhere yeah. around the world. But if you, if you go into like, how would you say, live with people, for a while, not just as a tourist. We are blessed enough to be able to live with the people who actually live in some way. Mm -hmm. They will also be very hospitable, even though they may not have very much mm -hmm. hospitable mm -hmm. Yes, honey. Um, I think for me, um, I'm speaking here of Kiwi culture. I really love is the Kiwis are very friendly. Um, mm. Whereas growing up in India, like my parents or anyone, like this, always say that be careful, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> but over here, it's like say hi to strangers. Like you know, you go for a walk, you're you know, you meet people, you just say hi. So it's a friendly culture. Okay. Yeah. There's definitely that. I mean, I have seen that TVs are definitely a lot friendly. When I came, I was quite surprised that when you walk, um, you know, especially if you go for a morning walk or an evening walk, people who don't know, they will just, you know, um, wish you or, you know, call on you saying that, hey, good evening, or, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I've also seen, I agree with John, because I've seen a lot of TVs are very compassionate. They are very giving, and I've seen that, uh, you know, for the past six years I'm here. So, what is our role as a disciple? And I think as, a, as uh, we all, I think it's good that as a church we are so diverse and it helps us uh, to be more mission focused and also adds value to, uh, uh, to, to the mission that Christ has given us. So mm -hmm. as a disciple, what roles we can play? And I think most of you have answered this, what I'm going to cover now. So I'll go very quickly through this. You know, being hospitable, I really appreciate that he's you know, you guys host, um, you know, different events. You know, we had uh, Midwinter Christmas, we had uh, Marriage Night at your place, and we had Matariki at your place. And um, Matariki is the place where, um, you know, Smith's invited uh, Daniel and Zoe, and that's when we con get, got in touch with them, and we are still in touch with them. And hopefully, you know, that will result into uh, reaching out to them. And, Hopefully they come to church one day. Mm -hmm. So that's important, and we, uh, uh, as the disciples, we should do that. You know, be hospitable, um, reaching out uh, and evangelizing on the street or on campus. If you're a campus or if you're studying, uh, you know, or, or even in your office, you can just reach out to people who are, or talk about God. You know, um, open your mouth and God will do the rest. Mm -hmm. um, you know, teaching and studying the Bible. You know. You may not be good at, maybe if you are not good at evangelizing or uh, uh, being hospitable, but some of you can study the Bible. Like I know Jonah or Kali is studying the Bible with 
different people who are coming, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you if you don't have a talent, it's okay. But you know, in in some ways, you can do it. You know, by um, you can plan and organize events. You know, um, I appreciate even Heather. You know, she organized an event last Saturday for all sisters to come mm -hmm. together and good opportunity. I think these are the ways you know we can come up and think about you know reach out to people. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I felt was also important: praying for those who who we are trying to reach out to. Mm -hmm. I think this is something that I have missed on, missed on a lot. So no, I forget to pray for those people mm -hmm. I want to reach out to. Mm -hmm. Because if if we pray, the Spirit of God will always motivate us or always keep us on our toe and we will be led by the Spirit when we reach out to people. Mm -hmm. And not by a... Otherwise, it's quite easy to forget. Mm -hmm. Easy to forget the things that we want to do and uh, with our daily life, you know, it's it's very easy to just not lose the focus of the mission that God has given us. Mm -hmm. So praying daily for those you are trying to reach out to can also help you. And lastly, uh, and finally, you work as a team. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, um, we, we should organize another walking, walking back mm -hmm. at an event. You know, that was another mm -hmm. event that we did, you know, we organize a hike so we can people can come. So yeah. different things we can do together. So. Let's pray and fast and invite our friends for the international service that's happening next month. Amen. So, uh, in conclusion, you know, as, um, uh, as a disciples, we are all called to make disciples and share the love of Christ with our neighbors. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, and um, uh, Great Commission is our privilege and opportunity to participate in God's ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel that it's it, it's very convicting to me when I when I when I kind of ponder over it. So it's a, it's a mission, it's a, like a plan, God's ultimate plan that he planned it when he created the universe. Mm -hmm. And as a disciple, he has given us that privilege to be part of that. So, you know, let's, let's say it's a privilege, but it's also an opportunity to be part of God's grand scheme of saving the world. Amen. So, um, uh, let's imitate Jesus to seek and save the lost, just as he did. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for listening to God with Joey. Amen. 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 Um, amen. Um, last time I forgot, but I would like to, um, um, yeah, maybe have some time to share. To share if you have any thoughts and what we can do as a church or what you learn. We'll just take another five minutes and then. Yeah, I'm thinking, but I think I think it really you know, reminded me of the Great Commission, why we're on the mission team <laughs> to begin with. Um, and even for those of us who didn't come on the mission team and have been here, like, we're all part of it. Um, you know, we're all here and it's together. Um, but I think it was a good reminder because I think I can feel, like, because I don't go to uni, or I don't have an office space as well. Yeah. Um, like, oh, where, do, where can I share my faith? Um, um, but I think it was just, there's a lot that we can do. Yeah. And something that's really important for all of us that now we're doing now is to is to get involved in our communities. Yeah. Um, whatever interest that you have. Um, like you know, I've been um, you know, trying to join all kinds of football teams. <laughs> and uh, you know, I've played for three of them currently and um, <laughs> but good, it's just yeah, it's about uh, and it's about like reaching out and building that friendship with these yeah. people. Yes. Um, uh, the other day I gave a ride to one one of one, one guy who just said, Hey, I need a ride to the football game. So I can give you one and 